Chekhov's likely to be involved there, a name that um, many say is as active as anybody, uh, kind of contacting people, seeing who might be available. So, Chris Fedor, let me ask you this. Um, trade deadline options, what do you think the Cavs have to give up to get uh, one of these guys? Yeah, they are active. There's a recognition, Dave, that they need a little bit more, obviously, with Ricky Rubio going down and being without Colin Sexton for the remainder of the year. There's a glaring need for another playmaker, shot creator, shot maker. Um, and for the Cavs, like one of the things that they've um, been unwilling to do during this post LeBron era is break up their core. And I think there's also a recognition within the organization that they wouldn't have to do that in order to kind of make a trade here at the deadline. The, the pieces that you would hear Ricky Rubio, his expiring contract has value around the NBA. Um, Colin Sexton is a name that that you can continue to hear. Um, depending on which player the Cavs would be getting back, I would think that he would be on the table. Now, my sources tell me that they want Colin back. They want to get a contract done with him this offseason. But, again, if you're getting the right piece back, maybe that's somebody that the Cavs explore. And the truth is their first-round pick – is not going to be nearly as valuable as some of these first round picks have been recently and maybe what a lot of people thought coming into the year. So because of the year that the Cavs have been having and because they have these playoff aspirations, suddenly the value of that first round pick is one where the Cavs would be willing to give it up in order to get the right piece back in return. So those are the names that that are the pieces that would make the most sense for the Cavs to give up in any kind of deal. Who are some of the um, the top guys that you think they're discussing and, and who might fit the best? Yeah. So they have a decision to make too, Dave, I think. If, if they're only going to get one guy, they have to determine, is it going to be a two slash three to kind of fill that Ricky Rubio, Colin Sexton void? Or are they going to look for an upgrade at the three slash four because Markinen has been hit and miss this year. Um, yes, he's part of starting lineup. Yes, he's one of the seven footers that, that gives them this unique identity. But he hasn't been making shots. He has looked uncomfortable offensively. He's been better lately, and there's some reasons for them to believe that maybe he can turn things around. But if they feel like Markinen's not going to give them throughout the year and into the playoffs what they would want, maybe they have to upgrade that spot too. So they have to figure that out. And there are different guys that they would be looking at if they want to go three slash four versus two slash three. But look, I mean, Karis Levert from the Indiana Pacers is somebody that the Cavs are very interested in. He doesn't make the kind of money that would be very difficult for them to match salary wise. If the Brooklyn Nets are willing to move Joe Harris, and I'm not sure that they're going to be willing to, but if they are, that's somebody that the Cavs would be interested in. Eric Gordon of the Houston Rockets. Just somebody who can create shots and make shots, especially in the fourth quarter when teams are so focused on Darius Garland. Buddy Heald of the Sacramento Kings makes sense. Goran Dragic of the Toronto Raptors. Harrison Barnes of the Sacramento Kings. Those kinds of players, I think, make more sense given what the Cavs would have to give up, more so than like a Ben Simmons type. Who, uh, who of those guys do you like the best kind of for the Cavs and fit? And, and how important is it, you know, they're different ages too. If, if they get a guy that's 26, 27, is that, are they more likely to be willing to part with more? Because that could be a part of the core moving forward. Yeah, I think that's what it comes down to. If it's a guy that fits their timeline and they can have for multiple years, then I think you would see them more willing to give up, you know, a Colin Sexton or an Isaac Okoro, those kinds of pieces. You know what I mean? Other than that, I think we're looking at a first round pick, multiple second round picks. For me, the guy that makes the most sense is probably Joe Harris. He um, can shoot the ball really, really well. He doesn't need the ball in his hands to be effective. And I think that's important. He can fit into the fabric of this team first, pass first, share the wealth offense that the Cavs are running here. He's not a ball stopper. He's not an offense stopper. He can hold his own on defense enough, especially being protected by Jared Allen and Evan Mobley. So to me, given what the Cavs need, given what the Cavs are missing, he would be at the top of my list. From what I've heard, Karis LeVert of the Indiana Pacers is near the top of the Cavs list. Um, he's somebody who makes a lot of sense, too. I would be on board with that. 
Dennis Schroeder, I'm a little bit more concerned about. He makes sense because he makes such a small salary and the Cavs would have an easy time being able to get him because he's on an expiring contract. But there are certainly some concerns in terms of his personality and how he would mesh in this locker room. Even though J.B. Pickerstaff does a great job in terms of his culture, you have to bring the right people in as much as you have to bring in the right skill set, too. Um, before I let you go, another uh, kind of veteran name that you might be able to get reasonably cheap would be Terrence Ross. Is that a guy that you think they look mm -hmm. at as well? Yeah, I do, for sure. He fits the mold of, of somebody who can knock down shots in the fourth quarter. Um, every now and then he can create for himself. But like Joe Harris, he doesn't need offensive plays called for him. He doesn't need the ball in his hands to be effective. And I think that's something that the Cavs have to worry about, right? Because you don't want to take the ball out of Darius Garland's hands. You don't want to go away from your identity. You want to find guys that can blend in. You know, we had a lot of conversations over the last year about somebody like Cam Reddish of the Atlanta Hawks who got traded to the New York Knicks earlier today. I never thought he was a fit because he wants the ball in his hands. He wants a bigger role. So whoever comes here, Dave, is going to have to have an understanding of what their role is going to be and how they can best help the Cavs, not best help themselves. And I think Terrence Ross fits that as well. He's a veteran. He's been around for a long time. He can knock down clutch shots. And uh, the Cavs need more shooting. That's the bottom line.